There are a few simple tricks that make your animation look more expensive. If you use them, your work improves fast. But if you ignore them, your animations stay basic. We need just two PNG files to start. Analyze the assets you have. See what you can separate. Photoshop is the easiest tool to cut the layers. Yes, you can try doing it inside After Effects, but it's really not worth the hassle. Because when you cut elements, you create empty holes. So add a new layer under your cutout, create a rectangle, and match the color with the eyedropper tool. Now the area is filled and nothing shows through when you animate it. You might wonder why we would separate the hand. We have one hand position. Let's add one more. When the hand enters the scene, we'll start with the open hand and then switch to the fist. With the right easing, the switch feels natural. We'll talk about that a bit later. So make sure the wrist connects to both hand shapes. This is the car we started with. And this is the same car after adding a simple shadow. There is an easy way to do this in Photoshop. Add an exposure layer above the original car layer. Lower the exposure to make it darker. Then press Ctrl I to invert the mask. Now pick the brush tool, set a soft brush, adjust the size and opacity. Now paint the shadow. Next create a new layer below the car. Pick the brush tool, adjust the brush shape a bit and paint the soft shadow under the car. And of course adjust the opacity. I always adjust the blending options to make the shadow look more natural. And I also like adding curves and a solid white layer to paint the highlights. Composition makes everything easier to read. Add a background color, then a rectangle for the floor and a circle behind the car. Optionally you can add a subtle gradient to each element. If you're not sure which colors to pick, I can recommend this website. Not sponsored, just helpful. And yes, before saving the file, put your layers in the right order. Let's build the control structure. Create a null for the car body. Select all car layers except the tires, parent them to this null and rename it car body control. Now we need a null for the entire car. So create another null, name it car control and parent car body control plus the tires layers to it. Next, create a null for the hand and parent all hand layers to it. Now everything will be easy to animate. If everything is already on screen when the animation begins, there is nothing new for the viewer to notice. But when you start from an empty screen and let elements enter, you instantly create movement. So we need another hand. Just take a photo of your hand with your phone. Cut it out from the background, turn the hand black and white, add shadow and highlights and drop the file into After Effects. Place it below the windshield layer and add a null object. Parent the hand and the car control layer to this null. Now think about where the elbow of this hand would be and adjust the anchor point accordingly. Add two rotation keyframes to bring the car into the scene. When we rotate the hand, the car rotates as well because the car control is parented to the hand picking null. To fix this, add rotation keyframes to the car control layer at the exact same timing and adjust the first keyframe to keep the car straight. We aim for realistic motion, so add a small impact to car body control with three position keyframes. First and last stays the same, but we are moving the car down for keyframe in the middle, just enough to show the car reacts to the motion. Then, using the rotation keyframes, we need to make the hand leave the screen, since it has done its only job. Now by pressing and holding ALT, you can drag the keyframes in the timeline to find the best timing. Next is the keyframes and adjust the motion graph, so the acceleration peaks in the middle. This motion curve will be the same for all keyframes here. Since the shadow doesn't make sense without the car, use opacity keyframes to animate it. To place the finger on the windshield, select the windshield layer, grab the pen tool and mask the finger overlap. Then on mask properties select inverted. But when the hand leaves the scene, the mask we created leaves a hole in the windshield. So find the path in mask layer properties and animate it frame by frame as hand is leaving the car. Next animate the ground and circle from bottom to center. Same timing as car enters and offset the circle layer on the timeline, so that completes the sequence. Finally, bring the main hand to the scene after this sequence. Add position keyframes on hand control, from right to center. Ease them and shape a curve with a strong peak. At that peak moment, press Ctrl, Shift and D to split the layer. Delete the extra part and place the fist layer in that moment. 
a tiny detail, but the brain catches it. Now we need to animate the hand. Start by adding a rotation keyframe, then move the hand slightly up and down as it prepares to hit. Next, add another keyframe rotating the hand up again for the final hit. After that, create the hit by rotating the hand down, and once the hit is done, reset the hand to its initial position. The hand touches the car twice, first during the preparation phase, and second at the moment of impact. Because of this, add position keyframes to the car body control, so the car reacts to the motion. Now in the graph editor, switch to the value graph, since it's easier to shape a clean curve for this type of movement. The preparation phase should have soft curves, while the actual hit should be a sharp drop, with the keyframe value decreasing rapidly. That sharp drop is our impact. At that exact moment, select all layers and split them to clearly mark the impact frame. From this point on, the impact will feel like a magic. Now let's start by changing the composition color using gradient ramp effect. Also add a glow effect to the circle. From this point you'll understand why separating layers before animating matters. We'll go through the separated layers one by one starting with the hood. Turn on the 3D switch for this layer and add keyframes to the X and Y rotation. Adjust the hood upward as it opens from the hit. The motion curve is similar to what we did before, with a strong peak in the middle. Then add two more keyframes for a small overshoot, slightly above the final position and then back to the initial one. Next, add the broken glass texture and place it on a windshield using the corner pin effect. Adjust the corners then add the liquify effect, making sure the texture fully covers the windshield. Set the blending mode to screen, duplicate it few times and pre-compose the layer. Since this is a new car part, parent the pre-composed layer to the car control so they move together. Now adjust the anchor point of the license plate and add rotation keyframes, following the same timing as the hood. Finish with one extra keyframe for a subtle overshoot. Next, apply the liquify effect to the car body layers. Select the brush and distort the layer as if it absorbed the impact. Then move on to the bumper and apply the same rotation keyframes. For the flashlights, add the circle shape, apply fast box blue and glow effect, then pre-compose it and parent it to the car control. Now let's repeat the same steps to clean up the scene, just like we did at the beginning. All we need to do is make everything disappear from the screen. But here is the real question. Does this animation actually feel expensive? Because clients don't pay for animation techniques, they pay for story. Let me show you what I mean. This animation, for example, looks nice. It's clean, technically solid, but it's still just an animation. Now look at the same animation again. This time, it has a story. There is a hero, there is an intention, there is a message, and that changes everything. In our case, the hero is the car, so the animation can't exist on its own. It needs supporting scenes. It can be a simple setup that gives context. Clients love this. And trust me, they will pay way more than you expect for an animation that tells a story. I hope this video was useful and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.